from the October 9th meeting of the Historic Preservation Jeff. Commission to order. Um, I see we're all here. I'll Can do you a, do a roll call? Absolutely. Member Church? Here. Member McGuire? Here. Member Minor? Here. Member Nicole? Here. Member Tanner? Here. And Chair Bergman? Here. All right. You have a quorum, sir. This is wonderful. We have our entire crew here, um, which is nice, and we're in our... Um, uh, natural location. Uh, natural <laughs> home. <laughs> last, month, last month we were across the street over at the uh, um, uh, police station, City Hall, so it's nice to be here. Um, uh, w one thing I, I neglected to do last um, week was to, or last month, was to introduce our new member, John Hammer, to all of us. So uh, everybody, most of you have already said hi to him, but please say hi. He's a longtime Lake Hello, Hello. And, and, and what you said was, though, that that meeting that we had a month ago was an unusual meeting. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Statement? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it, was John, it was John's trial by fire, and in many ways, the rest of us are trial by fire. Uh, so, um, John, welcome to the board officially. Thank you. Glad to be here. And uh, thank you for joining us. And so I think the first thing on our agenda, we've had a roll call, a consideration of the regular meeting minutes. So I hope you all have had a chance to take a look at them. Yeah, I, I think that there's an issue. <laughs> Um, because when you look down at number seven, it says commissioners report, Chair Bergman shared that the, and then it drops and then it goes back to six and seven. So I'm not sure what oh, okay. happened there. Oh, well, that's just an editing question, I suppose. Huh? What did you have? My recollection is you had no report. So there was, well, there was no report. So okay. we had a, uh, we did the advisory review, which we went through very quickly. And uh, we basically skipped the commissioner's report and then had a um, staff report uh. on the um, NAPC training program. Which I hope we're gonna at some point get closer to. So we can um, add that, that no report under the commissioner's report and then renumber. The numbers, yes. yeah. yeah. So that sounds like a motion to amend the minutes. So do we have a motion to amend the <laughs> I so move. Okay. I second. I a second, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, we have some minutes. Uh, we always ask at this point uh, for any non-agenda items and any visitors. Um, I see we have some visitors here this evening, but I suspect you're here for the uh, advisory review. You are correct, sir. Uh, do we have anybody else? Uh, no one online, sir. No one is online. Okay. So we have satisfied agenda item three, and this brings us to item four, the advisory uh, review for 40 East Center, the Village Hall, regarding... Uh, the doors and windows replacements. And if everyone recalls, this started at the last meeting, and I ran across the tree, street to see if we can grab Mike and our consultant, but they were still talking about the same issue at the okay. Architectural Board of Review. So you have in your packet their minutes, mm -hmm. and Mike is here to talk about the project along with our consultant. Hi. 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 I'm, I'm Mike Croak, the Building Code Supervisor for Lake Bluff, and I'm here with Dave Mishka of uh, Architectural Consulting Group. I'll, Dave's uh, working on drawing up the uh, drawings and bid documents for this project, and uh, I'll give you a brief overview and then turn it over to him for the details. Great. Um, so we're, we're planning to replace most of the windows in Village Hall um, next year, excluding these on this um, end of the radius, both on second floor and first floor, but most of the others. Um, for really two reasons. One, a lot of them um, have hardware that's no longer functional. Um, you know, cranks don't turn and open windows, et cetera. And the other is energy efficiency. We have the, uh, the weather stripping around the edges of a lot of casement windows falling off. And we have uh, some rot, especially on window sills and all that. Um, in one place we really need to increase our energy efficiency is the uh, front stairwell. I don't know if any of you have ever come up the front stairs on an afternoon in the summer, but uh, you know it gets uh, you know uncontrollably hot there and, and can be cold in the winter with uh, you know a south exposure, our harshest exposure coming right through um, you know single pane of glass with no um, infrared or UV tenting on it, and uh, you know that heat gain is kind of out of control there. So our goals with um, the window replacement is to replicate the historic forms in durable materials. 
Um, and with that, I'll turn it, and oh, it was reviewed um, last month by the Architectural Board of Review, and they, they voted to approve it. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Dave for the details on the windows. Okay. Mike, can you tell us how many historic windows there are versus uh, replacement windows? Yeah, good question. So most of these, of course, are the, from the 1997 when there was an extensive remodeling of Village Hall. Um, the remaining historic windows in the tower, there are first and second floor of the tower, there's a total of eight windows, but they're not all original, um, especially on the second floor. Um, there's, I think the first floor has three where both the frame and the glass are original. Second floor, there's two pieces of old glass left, and I'm not sure if there was even much of the wood in the frame that's, that was, was original. It much from what I found. First, I'm, I'm Dave from Architectural Consulting Group. Yeah. Um, Thank you for coming. Yeah, when we, we were uh, uh, retained to assess the, the condition of the existing windows, in this so as mike was saying as i was we started the tower and worked our way generally around the first floor we're going on the second floor to keep a kind of a continuity of going what i did find and mike was alluding to it is that uh we did notice the lack of weather stripping uh lack of insulated <coughs> glass on the windows especially in the tower uh, we were instructed or observed that the eight windows that are in the tower, I think there was eight windows, right. uh, we're looking at as uh, um, the historic windows to the building here. Uh, and in those windows themselves, we noticed uh, in particular, you know, I was thinking too, I just want to interject, Mike and I noticed that there was a, uh, some scratching and fading of, and deterioration on the inside of the wood itself on the inside. Mm -hmm. So we we really cannot figure out where that came from because they're not near the side of the windows. I, we can't, I can't figure where that came from yet. I'm trying to, I, I like to kind of get into that kind of detail. Sure. But, but what it's beside the interior of not being insulated, not being a glass uh, going on the outside, I noticed there was quite a bit of deterioration, uh, particularly on the sill portions or the lower portions of the window itself. Um, and also along the side of the windows where the trims meet the the wall uh, deterioration years of painting over and caulking uh, and deterioration and uh, of the caulking itself uh, i'm assuming is allowing some water to get inside that the the frames and the materials themselves did notice too on the glass that I think through some repairs that are trying to be making, the, the glazing or pointing around the windows itself is old and cracked, um, which is also affecting some of the, the wood members themselves. Uh, and then also you could see, for lack of better, it was a, a caulking smear around there where somebody tried to, to, or a haze on the glass, or I think they tried to repair some of the open areas of the caulk and the pointing around the, between the glass and the wood. Um, then we went around to the windows on the first floor and it, in particular it's it and the second floor uh, deterioration of the wood, the wood sills itself especially on the second floor here because there's a bigger sill area. Um, so it was, it was pretty much a, a a typical instance of each one and like Mike alluded to especially on the first floor uh, there's a lot of missing hardware we have noticed that there's some windows that can't actually close fully uh, on the second floor so uh, there's a lot of miss a little assemblies that are going on here that are causing issues with the with the with the windows or assemblies that are here now so what we were proposing, uh, I guess I'll leave it at that, is um, uh, we've been, we work with Marvin a lot uh, in, in restoration work. And um, this is a cutaway sample of, of a, a, a double hung window that I had in my library. Uh, what it is, is we're looking particularly for the, in, in the tower, something that, like Mike's saying is, uh, functional uh, uh, 
members or materials that are being used uh, and more energy efficient. So what we're recommending to do is uh, keep the interior casing, the casings the way they are, uh, pull the windows out from the outside and replace them in total uh, to, to get an entirely new window frame itself, a window unit itself uh, to be placed in. This is, this is just a sample. Uh, obviously, the color's not right. There's two or three different colors that permeate through here, and they're all different type of grays. So what we would do is we would get samples. This is uh, a double-hung window with an insulated uh, glass unit. Uh, and then also, this is a, uh, a wood core for insulation. And then it's also on the exterior covered with an aluminum casing. Okay, and then uh, this casing cladding would be painted and, and we would go through a sample situation and, 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 and get the colors that match the windows themselves that are here now. So we're duplicating not only um, the, the window itself, uh, but we'd be uh, in, in profile, but also the color itself. There's a couple other pictures in there uh, that I threw in, and there, uh, particularly if on the lower right, or I'm sorry, the lower left of this drawing, Drew, mm -hmm. um, and it's hard to see on this one, but of this, there's, I, I believe there's six windows in, in the tower that uh, have um, what I call a sash leg to it. Uh, it's a little OG profile, and Marvin in particular, as I was talking to them, is able to replicate that. So we would be able to come out and uh, duplicate that look again of the window itself. When you go, that, yeah, that's the good picture there. You can see the little corner piece that's got the little curves to it, the little OGs on it. So we could, uh, that's again a sash leg that, that would be matched in profile. Um, when you go down a little bit further, Drew, um, I was walking with my, I had dropped my granddaughter off at the University of Iowa. And, and all of a sudden I saw, and, uh, and it, it's down toward the back of the package, Drew, but if you go down, um, it, when you walk around there in the older buildings that they have, they literally, I came up with, here was the window with the sash leg duplicated in, in a real life situation. So I, what I liked about it is you could see that uh, in actuality what is really happening that they can do it in, in, into, a, into a, a, a realistic form. So what we're after again is with not only this is just to try to duplicate what you have, but give yourself more energy efficiency, more functionality, um, uh, and, and, and particularly more energy efficiency, I'm going to say, in the tower itself. Again, and also the same thing goes for the rest of the windows that we're targeting um, throughout the building. Um, one thing I did want to grab here is that the windows on the tower, um, now I only have this, this profile in this color, so we, we would get the right color. The, the windows in the tower and also actually throughout the building, especially on the first floor, have a, uh, a, a trim piece that goes on the side of the, the window. You look at this. <coughs> so what Marvin does is they have a, a piece here. Again, don't worry about the color. The color would match or go through the, the approval process. But it has a, we can match the profile of what's out there right now. Um, and that would go on uh, there without reducing what, and what I'm particular about is I don't want to start putting in a, my, my goal here is to not put a window in that all of a sudden we, we start getting the, the side frames and the sash <coughs> thicker. It's thicker. It's a very narrow uh, rail and sash system. So what this does is we still can maintain the narrow uh, frame and rail, and then maintain the profile that you have out here. Also getting the unequal, all the windows on the first floor have pretty much unequal sashes, which means that the top sash is a lot smaller than the lower sash. So we can match the look of that window, match the look of the profiles, and get that sash leg 
or anything special off the window so that in essence you're getting now a, I'm going to say a more energy efficient window, a more functional window, um, and then still match that look of it. Okay. Um, uh, great. Have you done any uh, analysis of rebuilding the original windows? I've been, uh, what we've done is we, we did a, uh, uh, let me put this, we, we did a big project down in Chicago. Uh, which had the had these twelve foot windows um, there, uh, and, and they were historic because it was going into a ballroom on the second floor of a building. Uh, what they wanted is uh, the, I'm not going to say uh, first the cost. Uh, we had the restoration company look at what the cost would be to do, you know, the, and, and also how how they would do it to take the windows and and do it properly. Um, first, what they the what they ended up doing is to they came back with numbers that were we tried to call now this I, I got to back it out because these were twelve foot windows these are these are monumental windows um, the costs that we were getting back were something <coughs> between thirty and forty percent more than a regular window replacement um, and we weren't gaining the uh, energy efficiency. They were doing as much as they could to get the glass in there. They had single pane glass, just like, just like yours, I'm gonna say. We had a back set up and do something different with the frames. Um, and all that extra work and taking out the windows, taking it to the shop, taking it into the, and then refurbishing it, bringing it back, that's where that, that cost drove it up. It wasn't, Particularly, I'm going to say the material. It was the amount of labor. Yeah, and we also took a look at the existing windows from the perspective of which pieces are worth saving. And you know, we we're hoping we'd see some nice wood grain like you see here on the oak from 1997. But you know, when we took a close look at those windows there and each of the individual pieces of wood, I mean, we didn't really find anything that you know that you'd really want to save. You know, the inside of that was so bland that somebody tried to fake the wood grain with a bad, you know, brush technique yeah. on the inside. <laughs> and, you know, if you got rid of the, the you know, that, you, then you're left with just, you know, a blank in the, the edges of, you know, of the wood, you know, that, that had originally been carved. I mean, those are all, you know, worn down. There was right. really nothing in particular left that would be... That would be salvageable on the yeah. wood. I mean, it, I'm more worried... It, it, also, uh, particularly on the exterior, when you do look at that, the sill portion is just, it, it's, it's peeling up, it's, it's deteriorated to the point <coughs> that, you know, what's our choice? Do we cover that up and try to keep it? But you're still left with a base that's not, you know, there's a limited time frame on the base. You know, I have a couple of questions mm -hmm. about um, the exterior. You talk about that that uh, aluminum that is the cladding on mm -hmm. the outside. That does that need to be painted, or does that come with certain colors? It, it comes with. It's it's. I, I don't know what the process is called, but it's, lack of better words, baked in. It's like, like it, a powder coating it. or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like bonded. That. Yeah. Anodizing. Yeah. yeah. So okay. the what I was uh, we use. We've done a number of projects. We've done we've talked to a number of window people, and you know they give a you know a very large warranty on the glass units itself and on the finish itself, and also the the materials as a whole assembly. Uh, and then another, I think he said another ten year to that to, of just the workmanship on there too. Uh, the 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 window installers that we'd be using um, when we're writing a spec up is to they would it would be a one-stop shop so they have to be able to do the installation of the windows uh, pr you know take the old windows out prep the opening up with and what we do now I think we alluded on the last meeting is you know they would you know now we put the, the rubber flashing that would protect the window opening so that would go in, it would go, you know, any gaps would get insulated with spray foam. 
so that that, that would cut down and help on the energy uh, usage. Um, they would be responsible for the caulking exterior of it, any like, touch-ups, uh, and anything that happens to the, the, the casings on the inside. Or if we decide to go ahead and put new casings in, but we're trying. I'm trying to keep the casings the way they are to be, you know, from the inside to be. Well, that that was my second question. Yeah. Excuse me for interrupting, yeah. but there, you know, there's the inside of the windows as well. Yeah. And um, yeah. Well, that's I, the I, inside. Okay. So the the inside of the window. I'm sorry, but the inside of the window. It's it's a it's a wood core. Okay. Okay. Marvin, in particular, I'm sure Anderson does it. They have you know, a plethora of what type of wood cores to use. Um, uh, uh, this in particular, I, I don't know what type of wood it is. I'm not that good at it, but the, this, the interior gets stained or painted, whatever it is, but I, I'm assuming it would be stained to match the, the windows and the finishes that you have Okay, because we've got all this nice quarter sawn over right. in here. I, I don't know if there's any way we can do that on these. Well, and then we could, we could spec what type of wood could be used on these. Um, you know, and, and just, uh, if you look at the wood <coughs> here, um, this, I don't know what it was originally spec. This is obviously, to me, a different wood than the, the casings themselves. Okay. I mean, the casings themselves are probably oak. Yes. Okay. The, the wood here, just by looking at it with the, with the grain in there, because it's more of an open grain, this reminds me more of a pine look that's, you know, a tighter pine that they probably finished and painted over. So, so what it really comes into a lot is the, the matching of the color. And these, these people, I know, we've done a big job up in Batavia with, the, with them. And, and it, you know, they're, I'm going to say craftsmen nonetheless, but, you know, we would work it out so that they're at every step. Um, we're going to have mock-ups and samples so that everybody can take a look at it and say, is this what we're looking at? Before you, I don't want them putting anything up on a wall, saying this is what it's going to be. You know, so, so the right way to do it is get a mock-up, a sample of the interior stain, the interior wood. Uh, they'll probably give us another sample like this, and, and, and the color chips or swatches of the exterior. Great, great. Um, is, is the intention to uh, make it so that uh, these are functional? Will they actually work as double hung windows? Uh, because I saw something in here that said fixed. The, yeah, some of them are fixed. I mean, the, the windows on the interior here, it's, it's, and Mike and I, we can walk through it. I think we walked through it. No, They're, I'm speaking of the ones in yeah. the tower, if you will, where they yeah, double hung. I, right, in the, in the tower, we're planning to um, do fixed windows, yeah. but put the mullion in the same place as the existing ones, so it'll, it'll look. Okay, just so you, like the existing. So it won't have to slide up and down and that type of thing. No. Right, but it won't Will they physically be, move. Uh, offset like they are today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you when you look at the double <coughs> hung now, with it being offset, the lower sash offset from the upper sash, it's the same type of double hung window. It's Good. it's 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 there. You're looking at a double hung one. It's just a non-functioning double hung. Okay. So for Mike, how often do you open these windows in the summertime? Never. Never. So you have all of this heat gain, but you don't have any way of ventilating it out of the tower. Right. I mean, yeah, exactly. Right. They they don't work. The sash cords have been cut, um, so they don't actually function. They they leak air around them, but they're not the, actually. The, the, the windows I just checked are all fixed in place now. Somebody has puttied them closed. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, but they're not. Some of the windows are not locked, so that keeps the, the meeting rails. Um, allow a great deal of air infiltration there. Uh -huh. uh, but how are you going to, is there any plans to ventilate the tower other than just by UV protection? Yeah, no, we, we don't have any current plans to add any ventilation. Okay, so it will, the, the, the only modulation you'll have of that, of that overheating effect is going to occur by the UV rating of the windows. Right, that's okay. right. Yeah. All right, do you think that'll be enough? Well, if, if it's not, we can always consider adding ventilation in the future. It'll certainly be better, better than today's situation by a, okay. a large margin, so. All right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the materials that I submitted, <coughs> but by way of background, I'm in a uh, Master's of Architectural Preservation program at Boston Architectural College. 
um, and have been involved in several window rehabilitation projects. Being on the board of the Friends of Lake Forest Library, uh, we rebuilt all of the windows at Lake Forest Library. They took all of the, you're talking about the 12 foot wide windows. Mm -hmm. The windows at the library, I think are eight feet wide and probably 12 feet tall, mm -hmm. big double hung windows. Uh, they went through a process of looking at replacing them versus sending them out, having them rebuilt and opted to rebuild the windows. And so they rebuilt the window weight boxes, they put in new window weights, they rebuilt the frames. Where the, where the wood frames were rotted out, they had the rotten pieces cut out and replaced. They, had, uh, they re kept all of the original window glazing, all the glass, and covered that with a UV coating. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, they came back and said they thought that they were at least at 95% of efficiency of replacing the windows and they did that on a cost-effective basis. Mm. Now then the next project that has come along is um, Ragdale. I don't know if you've been to Ragdale down in Lake Forest. It's an old estate. It's now a writer's colony. Uh, it has a big, beautiful estate house on the property. Uh, due to the various different types of windows there, they have casement windows, double-hung windows, transom windows. They, the, the house. The house is of an age, it's 1896, so it's older than this building, and it covers the waterfront on types of windows and sizes of windows. They went through the same process and came to the same conclusion. They rebuilt the windows, sent them out serially, a couple of windows at a time went out, came back. Uh, there they added a storm window and came up with uh, what they feel is uh, equal or better than replacement windows. Just today I have learned that Lake Forest High School has decided that they are going to keep their original windows. They are going to rebuild the windows, <coughs> regasket them, reputty them, and they have developed a storm window system that they're going to install. And they have gone through a great deal of cost analysis on that and found that it is as cost efficient to put in the storm windows and rebuild the windows. So that places us in a position of saying, well, if they can do it, why can't it be done here? I think it, it certainly is possible to do that. Of course, I know adding storm windows would be uh, <coughs> a change in the appearance from today's. At, at Ragdale, the storm windows are inside the windows. They're inside the rooms. Hmm. Interesting. So, Interesting. And those actually, the window, they're very, they're very proud of their assembly. It's a storm window that has a louver that opens, right. so that that part of the building is full of <coughs> residents who come there to work on their uh, writing projects. And if they're in the building, they can open the window and open the louver in the summertime, uh, or this time of year for fresh air. Right. So I, th I think the biggest consideration for us was the quality of the materials we'd, we'd be preserving. You know, we took a close look at what's there existing, kind of assuming we'd see some nice wood grain <coughs> that we see in this room, and only realized when we took a real close look at it that, you know, there's really <coughs> nothing attractive about the particular pieces of wood on the inside and on the outside. They're basically smooth, featureless pieces of wood, you know, you don't <coughs> see the grain through the paint or anything. Well, probably and what it, what so it is, well, what you're looking at is old growth Douglas fir yeah. that comes out of the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. That window, that wood is the finest grain lumber in the United States mm -hmm. at the turn of the last century. It has got the tightest grain <clears throat> of lumber available and it is without knots, it's without blemishes and it is absolutely pure and pristine. It looks plain because it is plain, but the trees there uh, were, so, they were 400 year old uh, Douglas firs when they were cut down, and that was the preferred lumber to use for uh, the, w the windows. Um, through various record keeping, we were able to show that the windows at Lake Forest High School, built in 1935, were built out of Douglas fir. And, um, most of the window rebuilding companies um, specialize in going out and um, 
acquiring that, re harvesting that kind of lumber where they can find it and using it when they're able <coughs> to rebuild the windows. So you shouldn't find a lot of knots. You shouldn't find a lot of nice fine grain in the wood there, uh, even if somebody has painted it on uh, in some fashion. So have you ever looked at the thermal efficiencies of regasketing old windows? No, I have. No. Okay, have you looked at the thermal efficiencies of regasketing the window weight boxes? Okay. No. Or adding film to existing glass. No. I think what we could do is we could we could do we <coughs> have the, we should do the exercise of of getting a window person. Do you have you have a name of somebody, or I can get a bunch I, of names I, of people I, too. I, I I don't know that. I, 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 so no. I I don't have a name directly for you. Yeah. So there yeah. are I, no, I'll dig the one first. up that I did so. for Chicago, but. You know, I think we should go through the exercise of taking a look at it, and at least on these six windows, I would say. Well, so yeah. that may be different than the windows that were put in in 1997. Mm -hmm. That lumber that's used is clearly inferior to what was coming out of the forests in mm -hmm. uh, 1895 mm -hmm. and in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. So that's probably a form of pine and not necessarily Douglas right. fir. Mm -hmm. So um, you end up with a lot more wood rot problems there. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, well, when, when we set up what we could do, and that's what we talk about, is we could set up the bid to, uh, you know, I was thinking of setting up the tower window. It, almost three assemblies of, of areas is, you know, the tower windows mm -hmm. and the assembly, the first floor window mm -hmm. assemblies and the second <coughs> floor windows. Uh, what we could do is take a look at it and and you know, in particular, specifically at the tower windows, is is get a the the window installers or the window people we do work with a lot of they deal with Marvin windows or sure. you know, specialty windows, so they won't do restoration. It's a mm -hmm. whole restoration is a whole different as yeah. you know, it's a whole different ball game. Is the if that's okay, is just to do the exercise of taking it, looking at it, and then not only getting a price, but talk about the efficiencies and, and what we'd have to do to, mm -hmm. you know, then it turns into a budget number. Mm -hmm. so what, you know, we're, what, what are we dealing with here? Yeah. Well, it, it, it yeah. just, I, I wanted to raise a question. I would no, say oh, what, no, your, that's a, what your knowledge yeah. base was yeah. on all yeah. of this. So, yeah. okay. Um, How's the time to do it? Uh, questions, well, other thoughts? What was the objective of the project? Was it to increase, was it to increase function and efficiency, or yes. like what what triggered it? Uh, it yeah, it was both function and efficiency. Um, for the you know for the tower windows, the historic ones, it was you know to get energy efficiency mm -hmm. um, there, and um, you know for a lot of the 1997 windows, it was to restore the functionality and and get a little more energy efficiency to them. And then, too. what is the life expectancy of a window today? Because 1997 doesn't Not seem too long. long ago. No. <laughs> yeah. When I well, when I talked to the window manufacturer, my contact, he was telling me once, it's. He was saying 40 to 40 plus years. I said, well, you know, what's the what's the total length? He couldn't give me an exact <clears throat> time frame. Um, and I, I, Paul, I, I, you know, with the with the style of wood and that. <clears throat> It's, 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 you know, it, it's, it, the, the life cycle, life cycle, I'm going to say, mm -hmm. uh, compared to old growth with wood is a lot different. I mean, you're, you're right, but it, you're dealing with a 40, 45 year window life expectancy. Those windows out there are 130 years old. Yeah. 119. 119. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and I'm just gonna, what I'd like to do is if we, because um, I was thinking about this too, and I, uh, we should, with the, with the age of the windows, um, there's always that question of lead paint. Sure. You know, so we should take, that's gonna come into play too. Um, either way you go. E either way you go. <coughs> either way you go, yeah. you have a lead paint remediation question. We should we should yeah. pull some samples okay. of what's out there and have somebody test it, okay. uh, just to see because it's 
you're either going to, the whoever takes the windows out in a restoration program, they're going to be pulling the paint off and having to dispose of it properly, you know, while they're working on it, disposing of it, um, and putting the newer paints in, which don't have the lead qualities. Uh, if you're if you're putting in a whole new window, you're doing the same thing, but you're just you're just making sure you're taking it out and disposing of it properly as to pull the window out. Still have the paint dust question. Yeah, okay. you then, you also have the um, uh, caulking question. Is there any asbestos in the caulking? So true. Um, that leads to sort of that secondary problem. Yeah. I don't know if there's an excess of caulking in any of the windows, but. There, there's, if you, well, you look at it, there's, there, there's been, you can see that there's gobs, for lack of better words, mm -hmm. you know, something I would do. I would just take a cock gun and go over it, right? But You, you um, and me. Yeah, but, the, you know, so I don't know what the layer behind it is, you know, mm -hmm. or what even the layer in front of it is. You know, you're assuming it's okay, but as you get back in, and particularly on the windows, I'm going to say, now, <coughs> Before, when you used to put windows in, I mean, a long time ago, they would never even seal between the, the framing and the, the wood windows. There would be this gap. <clears throat> you know, then somebody got the idea of, okay, let's stuff in some insulation in there to close it off. You know, that's kind of haphazard. And, you know, and you take the chip, but it's cutting it down a little bit. Now what you do is you spray foam the whole thing so it's all, it's all tight. So, again, there's a couple steps that overlap each other. Whether you're doing, if you we do approach it a restoration, or if we do approach it, we're taking these windows and putting new in is is putting the correct uh, pr window edge protection or frame protection and the insulation in either way. So this might not be an. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> this might not be appropriate for our purview because we're historic preservation. But is there a maintenance element to either of these approaches that we should account for? Because like, why did these only last 20-some 20, 20 years, 27 <coughs> years? Like, should, should there be a maintenance plan that's part of this project so that <coughs> you can get the longevity out of it? There, well, there, I, I know when they put the windows in, I think it's 20 years that, you know, there's a 20-year warranty at least. I, I'm going to verify that. So the window installers themselves... You want to write that into the contract that they're responsible for, you know, caulking and deterioration, <coughs> things like that, for a, a, a very long period of time. Um, then, then after that, there's there should be some kind of maintenance issues to make mm -hmm. sure that you know somebody's watching, you know, the condition <coughs> as, as it's proceeding along. You need a, a maintenance protocol. Like a maintenance protocol. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. It's like. Like painting the windows every twenty years. Well, you know? it could be. I mean, you know, and, and you know, you forget which one it is. There's one window in particular here. <coughs> you just look at it, and there's the gap. The gap between the caulk and the wood is just it's 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 huge. It's not just a little crack. <coughs> it's it's you know, and that's just more of a maintenance type of thing in the building that needs to be taken care of. That somebody gets up there on a ladder and and you know takes a look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, other questions? Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, boss. Um, so taking off on what you were talking about, I was wondering, too, about the windows only lasting about 25 years, the aluminum windows. Um, my guess when they replaced them in 97 is that they were wood windows before that, probably. I don't know. I'm assuming, yeah. I mean, yeah. Was there any thought given to uh, putting in wood windows instead of aluminum windows if if we would at all maintain the wood windows in the tower, um, wood windows just seem to be much more fitting with the. Well, it's yeah. You the, could. It's it's what we're after here. You could put. I mean, they they Marvin. I keep going back to that. They have a a, a wood window. It's uh -huh. just what you're now. What it's coming into, even more important, is the maintenance. You know, what an aluminum window does is you're trying to take a little bit of the maintenance away because the aluminum is protecting the wood mm -hmm. substrate. But, so, yeah. But the other thing we discovered yeah. looking at this is these are, the window sills were aluminum, right? Well, Here, or, or no, plastic or something, they're, on the outside. Oh, on the outside, yeah. On yeah. That material. yeah. yeah. 
And no one even realizes that because, you know, the wood on the outside of the building is so smooth that it's just, you know, it's paint on a smooth surface which looks very similar to paint on any other smooth surface, you know, regardless of what's underneath that paint, if you're not seeing, mm -hmm. you know, the texture the way you would on a cedar or something that has a wood texture, you're just seeing paint on a smooth and, surface and, and it's, yeah. you know, unless you go up on and knock on it and, you know, know the difference between how one sounds to the other sounds. Right. And part of the problem too, when to it goes into maintenance is, you know, you can, you can put aluminum, you can put vinyl. Uh, which I wouldn't recommend, but um, you know, again, there's a period of time where maintenance becomes very, very important on this because you know joints split apart. They, they you know, over, so you want somebody that's going to get up there, look at the window, know what they're looking at, caulking the areas, fixing the areas that they have to. So there's a point of time in the future that you know a, a maintenance protocol is very important. Continue with. I can, I can add that the um, <coughs> windows at Lake Forest High School, the windows on the front facade, on the street facing facade, are the old windows that they're rebuilding and uh, now storm covering with storm windows. The windows on the back side, on the parking lot side of the building, were replaced, um, I think, 19 years ago mm -hmm. in the remodeling that occurred then. and. Everyone who has looked at those 19-year-old windows say they are not worth repairing. To give you an idea how fast the wood can degenerate uh, mm -hmm. using modern wood. The lumber um, just doesn't survive. It's really the, the quality of the wood. Yeah. The so what, um, what Gail Wallace told me, there's a, a shop down in um, Galesburg that repairs windows on a national basis. Um, they did the windows at Ragdale and did the windows at um, Lake Forest Library. They've also done Yale and Dartmouth and Princeton and the Unwencia Club and <coughs> countless other buildings. Uh, she says that the um, old growth uh, Douglas fir has wood resins in it that repels the moisture and repels the bug rot and that even at 100-year-old wood mm -hmm. still retains those resins. The modern-day um, lumber does not. Fine. So yeah. that's, that's part of the process. So um, I, I have a, uh, an aesthetic question for you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the problems with many replacement windows is that the uh, window frame itself is set into, uh, the window sash is set into the frame in such a fashion that it sits uh, right on the wall face of it, mm -hmm. whereas the original windows would be set back another inch or inch and a half. Mm -hmm. are you, if you put in replacement windows, are you going to maintain that depth of field <coughs> so that there's yes. enough um, <laughs> setback? Yes, yes. We're, what we're going to do is, is main, maintain and take, we're going to do some in that more in-depth studies of, of the back sets. The, the, you know what we're getting involved with here, um, so that we can match what's there. Um, I, just for like I was talking to the, you know, the, you know this profiler for example. Sure. It's the ones out there are something like two and a quarter inches wide. Okay. This is two and an eighth. Uh, you know, so it's 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 there. It's not. It's, almost. It's yeah. almost. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's right there. Okay. So we're gonna try. We're gonna match as close as we can to what the profile and the back sets and the style. <coughs> well, you're lucky in that there. Are, this building doesn't have any windows with. <coughs> excuse me, windows with muntins in them. Right. Because I'd be asking you a thousand questions oh, about right. muntins. Right. Uh, because that's usually the uh, the sticking spot yeah. with the replacement windows. Yeah, and that's the window in Chicago that we did. They, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. a, a monumental window that was filled with muttons. Mm -hmm. And Chicago Historical, what they wanted is that they, it was an eight-story building, and they didn't care about floors three through six mm -hmm. or through eight. They just wanted whatever was going on on the first floor. Okay. Um, and that window, quick story, was an aluminum-framed window but we got a manufacturer that did a specialty historic profile. Um, 
so that we <coughs> match it up. The second floor was this, uh, these monumental, and it was full of mullions, but they wanted to put that, that uh, insulated glazing unit inside there. Gotcha. They had to rebuild all that. Okay. Um, other questions? Yeah, I, I have one. I, um, and this is just about this blueprint on the very last page that you had up. Um, am I confused? Because I'm looking at what says south ele elevation. It seems to me that that's facing west. Oh, that's, that's a computer issue. That's... And it seems to me the west elevation is actually the north, and the north elevation is probably the east, and the east elevation is probably the south. Am I right? I would think yeah, so. South is the tower. Yeah, the tower, the tower, this, this direction out here yeah, is that's, west. That's, that's south. west. No, it's that's south. south. That is south north. Yeah, yeah I, I think the elevations are correct. There is, is a, a, a window here. in the wrong place in north elevation. But this, this is the north, north that way, south that way. Yeah, west is here. Around. I think it's west. I think it's correct. South. Yeah, the building's on it. This is this is west. Isn't it's it? west. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Isn't that the front door? The, I mean, yeah, but the, building's the, the front door oh, is, is yeah, it's not is perfect. not We're, the, parallel we're to this, this is north, but it's really northeast. Well, right. You know, this is okay. Okay. This is All right. South, but it's really kind of southwest. I kept looking at this and thinking, right wait a minute. So yeah. North by northeast. Yeah. Okay. Any any sailors in the room? Right. Uh, okay. So I, I just trying to get my head around. How many 1997 windows are there? How many would you replace? Um, what are, I, I, I counted it in. There was 20, <coughs> 28 windows of 1997 windows there and then and, and then the the, the regular there's, ones. There's eight windows in the tower okay, in addition thanks, to that. Thanks. Um, it's broken down, I think, as 16 and 18. I remember that kind of combination. So it might be a little more, but it's, 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 I could get you the, the exact numbers uh, broken no, down. Right. I would be, you know. It's about a quarter, three quarters. Yeah. It's just real yeah. rough. So, so for the pre-1997, we're looking for the most efficient window we can get, right? I mean, because we're, we're replacing something that we put in in 1997. There's no real historical piece to that is there right yeah mm -hmm. so we're so really those can be replaced yeah those can restored. be replaced you want to put the best efficient right. that you know matches as good as you can on those and then we're our our focal point is the eight the eight what yeah. to do with those yeah <coughs> okay yeah. interesting enough because I, I did go back to try and get my arms around why they were saved originally right it's not noted in the ordinance for the yeah it, it was just trying to curious about that will, other than let somebody else solve it I will venture that these are window units so that you're able to buy that in a kit whether it's Marvin or Anderson or yeah. Pella yeah. that comes in a kit and those Especially. in 1997 that would be custom custom order because the window industry has caught up with modern or is caught up with ancient architecture yeah. so it may have been in uh, 1997 that they didn't have a window replacement for that but they had this was simple mm -hmm. and off the shelf yeah that makes sense because the original windows history of them and, and Paul you know they never had windows you just took out of a shop mm -hmm. a guy would come out there and he'd put it all together in the field that's why you go from <laughs> one opening to the other and there's a little bit a different there's a little variation Mm -hmm. We're to going to do that yeah. in our house. Yeah. Yeah. So, One more question. Um, <laughs> Margaret's got a question. Yeah. Okay, so these that we aren't doing, are they efficient? Because they don't function, but are they efficient? Because if we replace all these other ones and then these are bleeding air. It... Yeah, they're, they're not too bad. I mean, they are thermal pane windows from okay. 1997. Uh, they are, so they are insulated glass. Um, so, you know, even though it might not be quite as, almost quite as efficient as today, they're pretty close. Okay. So these are thermal inefficient. They're just, the functional element of them is allowing them to leak and 
not work. Yeah, because if you open this up mm -hmm. on the edge there, there's a plastic weather stripping mm -hmm. all the way around, and that is just completely crumbling that plastic from 1997. Okay. And then, you know, the functional aspect of the crank mechanisms is, is mm -hmm. also falling apart. And, and there are some um, that I've noticed on the 97 windows because the 97 windows have the double insulated glass <coughs> and they're sealed on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, there's some condensation, you know, there's a, there's a lifespan to mm -hmm. the seal. The IGL or the IGL yeah. wear out. It's wear out. The gas giving and it's, 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 there's some where we're starting to fog up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that, that's where, that's when it's starting to go against the, the energy efficiency of the window itself. These up here, are, well, we didn't look at them, we were targeted. Mm -hmm. These are more, from what I remember, the drawings are a fixed type glass. Mm -hmm. right. So there's not, there's not the weather stripping, there's not the operational capability of them that you have, where these in particular have the, the operators, the windows through the weather stripping, if it, it gets affected and wears out. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. Other, other thoughts, questions? I need a motion. All right. Well, uh, you know, some comments from the standpoint of, uh, you know, I've been maintaining windows for probably 60 years, uh, old houses, <laughs> newer houses, and whatever else. And so, you know, and I took a close look at these windows uh, the other day during the daylight hours. Uh, and I almost grimaced when I took a look at it. They, they should have been replaced or repaired, you know, uh, Probably about the time my children were born, if you will. So that, <laughs> so that goes back quite a few years now. Um, and so uh, rebuilding them, I think, uh, you know, especially since it's really uh, more visible in there, would have a certain appeal from the standpoint of the character. However, the, it would be painful from the standpoint of how much would have to be done to repair each and every window. You know, it depends on if you... If you set them up to be fixed, then that would make it easier, of course, even if they're uh, you know, rebuilt, if you will. Uh, but if you really rebuild a, a double-hung window, you would really have to put in the, the new cords, the new mm -hmm. weights, and everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, and most old windows, I think, have been painted shut, if you will, you know, where you know, unless you really do a, a great job or you have a painter that basically will go in there and, and make sure that you don't seal it up uh, or with the paint, then, then you're okay. But you know these basically have been you know, painted over a, a long time ago. So my problem is that uh, as much as I can appreciate the, uh, the, the, the history and the appearance, if you will, from a, uh, an overall you know, standpoint, that I'm too close to it from the standpoint of uh, having to maintain um, and rebuild those types of things. And I've done a certain amount of rebuilding. I've, you know, my house here basically has the, the wood millions or whatever you call it. Uh, and I've redone all of those. And, and there are probably maybe hundreds of panes, if you will, by the time it got done. So I, so I really did that, and, I, and I'm glad that I did. Uh, and so at least we don't have to deal with that here. But my feeling is that from a practical standpoint, you know, having to go through and get estimates on that type of thing, and where you're dealing with a whole different crew of people in order to do that, as opposed to doing the rest of the windows, uh, you know, that's just uh, too difficult for me to even comprehend how much uh, extra work would be involved in that. So, so, so I can appreciate the, uh, the overall historical aspect of it, uh, but I look at it from a practical standpoint, and I think what's being proposed here, you know, especially from the outside, will look just the same as it does today, and will have a, a much, much greater uh, maintenance factor uh, the other thing would be that if we were to rebuild the ones that we have in a historical uh, manner, uh, it sounds like we'd have to put in storm windows in order to have uh, the, you know, I mean storm, yeah, storm windows in order to be able to have the same type of uh, <clears throat> heat factors that we have here. And that would be a whole different look in its own right compared to what people in, in the last uh, generation probably have seen here. Uh, in looking at those windows, yes, you could see where on the outside there used to be storm windows, so you could see pegs sticking up from below and brackets up above. Uh, and so at one point in time, there were storm windows here, but that was probably a long time ago. So, you know, I, so I agree address, with you. To address, um, uh, at Lake Forest Library, <coughs> Lake Forest Library, they rebuilt the windows. They took each one out mm -hmm. and sent it down to Galesburg 
and had the window disassembled, had all the lead paint stripped off of it, had them re had, had them restained to an appropriate stain color in Galesburg, had them re -puttied. they brought the windows back, they rebuilt the window weight boxes, they hung new window weights, they put in new window weight chains, and they did not put in storm windows. And they found that they had a very high level of efficiency. With a single layer, single layer of glass? Single pane of glass with a UV coating on it. Okay. okay. At Ragdale, they used an interior storm window. And it's at Lake Forest High School that they have now decided to go to an exterior storm window. So it, there, there's a number of different um, uh, processes that you can go through for that. Okay. But typically, they take the windows out, send them to a shop, and have them bench rebuilt. Oh, and, and I'm and they're sure able that's to, they're very, able very to, possible. They're, and, they're and, able to do that on a cost-effective basis. Okay. Okay. But, so. so if we could have rebuilt windows that are just as efficient and cost the same as replacement, we do that, right? That's what we're saying, right? But, so you were going to look into it and come back to us and say how much more it would be, right? Yeah, well, yeah. So, I, I heard the 30, so 40%. Before, before we get to that, okay, <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like we have, we have the, uh, the issues drawn here. What I would like to do, since we don't do this very often, why don't you guys sit down for a couple minutes? <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> what I want to do is, we, we don't get to do this very often because we don't get into looking at alterations to an existing uh, landmark building in Lake Bluff. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they do in a lot of other places is they go through the criteria for changes to protective features on a regular basis. This is part of our ordinance. And this is part of the decision-making process that we go through. And um, as I explained, in, so in last month, we went through the guidelines that are in our statute for landmarking a building. And we went through the whole process of going through all of the guidelines and deciding whether or not we thought each guideline fit. <coughs> I want to point out that the guidelines that we have here this evening are part of the Secretary of the Interior Standards. So this is not something that we've dreamed up. This isn't something that comes pie in the sky, okay? And this, I think, will help us get to that decision-making point okay. of whether we want to ask these guys to go out and, and, and do some more consulting work or whether we think we're comfortable with sort of what their plans are at the moment. So in your packet, you should have the criteria for changes to protected features. Does everybody have that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go through Section B, the general standards, Section C, the rehabilitation guidelines, and then D, the architectural guidelines. Now, a number of these aren't going to apply because we're talking about just windows. We're not talking about putting an addition on the building. We're not talking about putting a second floor on or anything like that. So some of these aren't going to apply, but I think we should go through these and take a look at them just as part of our, uh, part of our process of, of going through this. So I'd like to start out with the general standards uh, in uh, paragraph B. So item one is, any work should promote the purpose and goals of this chapter and the general welfare um, of the village and its residents. So I think we can all agree that fixing the windows in the village hall uh, promotes the general welfare of the village. Number two, alterations that do not affect any essential architectural or historic characteristics of a feature as viewed from any adjacent public or private street ordinarily should be permitted. So that gets us to the point that we're just starting to raise of should we ask the guys to go do some more um, uh, consulting work or not. So then... Can I ask a question? Because the way I read that is if it's visually, if it looks visually the same as it does today, mm -hmm. it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So then that gets to saying that we think it's okay for the plans that they're presenting, mm -hmm. okay? But let's go through this a little bit further because there's a whole bunch of guidelines here. We have item three, the, the construction of new structures and buildings um, and alterations to landscapes. Well, we're not constructing anything new. We're not affecting the landscape. 
So I think we can skip three. Mm -hmm. Item four, uh, if possible, the construction of a new structure or buildings or alterations to the landscape that doesn't apply, I think we can skip <coughs> that. Okay. Number five, the distinguishing original qualities or character of a feature and its environment should not be destroyed. No modifications or demolition of any historic material or distinctive architectural element should be permitted except when necessary to assure an economically viable use at the site. So this is another paragraph that affects what we're trying to decide tonight. And so how do you feel about this paragraph? I think you need to define economically viable and does that mean at the point of purchase, at the point of implementation or long-term maintenance and all okay. of that? I think if we ask Drew, I think if we ask Drew to do a um, uh, an amortization schedule, then I think he might explode. Um, <laughs> but I'm so, just saying it's an ambiguous yeah. ambiguous well, it, term, it, so, so you need to specify. Yeah, you know these the, these these guidelines are never going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so we always have to ask the question of no modification or demolition to a historic material or distinctive architectural element should be permitted except where necessary to assure an economically viable use of the site. So we end up going back and forth with that a little bit, okay? So let's just, let's just put, a, put a star next to that and, and, and go through some of the rest of these. Uh, demolition should not be undertaken if a feature is economically viable in its present condition or could be economically viable after completion of appropriate modifications even if demolition would uh, permit a more profitable use. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about demolition of the windows, this gets us to the economically viable after completion of appropriate modifications. So this is another one of those items that gets us to that point of how do we make this decision. Okay, so we have uh, a couple of items in the general standards that gets us to that point. Going to paragraph C, the rehabilitation guidelines. We have reasonable efforts should be made to use a feature for its originally intended purpose or to provide a compatible use that requires minimal modification of a feature or its, or its environment. Okay. So are we gonna use the windows for their intentional purpose uh, or provide a compatible use that requires minimal modification? Do we think this is important, or is this an item that we can skip? Well, I think it's pretty obvious we're going to use them for their originally intended purpose. It's a window. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not yeah. covering it up or plastering okay. it over. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, item two. Uh, this may not apply, but all features should be recognized as products of their own time modifications that have no historic basis and seek to create an earlier appearance than the true age of the property are discouraged. This is where you try and change the look of the building. You want to make it look older, you want to make it look fancier, yeah. you want to gussy yeah. it up in some fashion. Yeah. So this is probably one that we don't need to concentrate on. Three, the changes that have taken place over time evidence the history and development of a feature <clears throat> and its environment. These changes may have acquired significance in their own right, and this significance should be recognized and respected when dealing with a specific architectural period. Now, this probably doesn't apply to the windows in the tower. Those are the original windows, and they haven't changed. But they may apply to the windows that, are, that have been replaced in 1997. So have those changes acquired the significance in their own right, and should be recognized, or is it something that is de minimis and we don't need to necessarily concern ourselves with? So not. Are you asking I don't, that as a yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think we have to be. Careful. So we can we can we can pass on that. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, this distinctive <laughs> item four: distinctive stylistic elements or examples of skilled craftsmanship that characterize a feature should be maintained and preserved if possible. These are pretty standard windows. I don't think this is necessarily gonna apply. Uh, the windows at the high school, the windows at Ragdale, 
on the windows at the library are distinctive windows, and so that falls into a different decision-making part of the process. Five, uh, deteriorated architectural elements should be repaired rather than replaced if possible. And that gets us directly to the conversation that we're having this evening to repair uh, rather than replace. In the event replacement is necessary, the new material should match the material being replaced in composition, design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. And so that's what Mike and, and company are trying to show us this evening, that mm -hmm. the windows that they want to replace with are uh, similar in composition, design, color, texture, and other visual qualities. And so it's the visual qualities that we've been trying to discuss this evening. So this is part of our decision making. Um, the last one, I'm not sure this applies, service and other forms of cleaning, cleaning of a feature. Um, we're not necessarily cleaning anything, we're not sandblasting the building. Um, so that takes us to paragraph D, architectural design guidelines. And these are concerned with sort of the shape and size of the building itself. So a bunch of these we're going to sort of click through. It talks about, number one, the height of a feature after the alteration. We're not changing the height of the windows. We're not changing the window openings at all. The relationship between a feature and adjacent open space. Again, we're not changing any of the window openings. The relationship among the height, width, and scale of the feature. Uh, we're not changing. Number four, the directional expression of a feature uh, from horizontal to vertical is not changing. Um, if we were dealing with muntins that were going to be different, that might be a, a question. Uh, number five deals with roof shapes, and that doesn't apply. Number six, the architectural details, general design, materials, textures, and colors of the feature or alteration should be compatible with the architectural details, general design, materials, textures, and colors of the original feature. So this is what we're trying to talk about, compatibility between new materials and old materials. This enters into this. Uh, number seven is appurtenances, including signs and fences, and we're not dealing with any of the signs and fences. So these are the guidelines that we have that we're trying to apply. Mm -hmm. And so as we're going through the process of trying to decide what we want to ask the village to do mm -hmm. with their historic building, we end up going back and looking at the general standards, okay? Uh, number two, alterations that do not affect the essential architectural or historic uh, characteristics of the feature ordinarily should be permitted. And so I've, I've heard that, something that sounds like that discussion this evening. Um, then getting to paragraph five, the distinguishing original qualities uh, a feature and its environment should not be destroyed. No modifications or demolitions uh, of a historic material uh, should be permitted except where necessary to ensure the economic viability of the site. Do we think there's a, do, which side of paragraph five do we weight more heavily? Where the paragraph says no modifications or demolition or do we see assuring the economic viability of the use of the site. And so that's a question that essentially we're looking at. That's, that right. John, I think that was uh, something that you were uh, bringing up. Okay. So having looked at the guidelines on a pretty close basis, these are what are supposed to help us in our decision-making process. And so now I want to ask the question of how do we feel about this? What are our thoughts as far as asking them to go do some more research and do some more consulting work on the windows in the tower, the, the original windows, and where necessary, there'll be some byproduct research that would come out for the windows that have been replaced. And so I'd like to hear your thoughts on what, 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 you, what you would like to do, what would you like to ask them to do? an opinion. <laughs> I know that's shocking. Mm -hmm. um, so the 97 windows, they don't seem um, significant from a design perspective. They seem functional mm -hmm. and they're non-functioning. 
So it feels like my recommendation or my thought would be you give them the go ahead to go forward with the plan that they have. Okay. Then those windows are potentially um, more significant historically and we haven't done the due diligence to understand what it would take mm -hmm. from a level of effort to restore them if it's viable if it is viable what are the measurements for success are they still as efficient what is the cost what is the maintenance and then once if if we can do that in a reasonable amount of time and effort and cost to do that assessment then we evaluate a versus B because right now I don't feel like we have a comparison to make a decision okay. what she said no you I agree mm -hmm. no all right any other ideas I agree that it makes sense to gather more information to be able to make the best decision and that would be finding out how much what it would mean to try to restore the windows and how much that would be and and then ultimately, don't we make a recommendation, but it's for the village board to right. decide That's correct. which right. way they go. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the village board can tell us uh, <laughs> what they want us to do, yeah. Yeah. always. Yeah. yeah, they can okay. still decide. But our, our, our objective is to help them make a good decision and mm -hmm. raise the good. Okay. Well, that's why I wanted to go through the guidelines, because the guidelines help guide us mm -hmm. in going through the process. So that's why I wanted to make sure that we had this thinking kind of in, the, in, in the forefront of what we're looking at. Do so. we do we all agree that those are historically significant windows but that, to the building? That's exactly what I was going to say. The ones are, on the, are in they the really, tower. Are they mm -hmm. distinctive architectural elements or are they just older? I think he's saying the wood is maybe just... Well, they're, they're the original windows in the building, so it's what the architect envisioned is that they look the way he designed them. So it's part of the original design of the building. But and we're so if we think the them, not demo, I mean, it's, we're not changing the facade of the building by replacing them. So if the, if the window looks the same, is that good enough? Or are they his, like, and that's what, my what, question. What, what's, what's this telling us? I, I'm not sure I, I <laughs> that's where I'm, I'm not, so, I'm not sure I agree or disagree. I don't know how I feel about those windows because I, they don't, they don't speak to me as um, historically significant. They are original, I get that, but I'm just trying to understand why they're historically significant. It seems to me that functionality is a big issue here, and if we can get a, a, a better functioning product by replacing them with with something that is uh, of current technology, for instance, the you know the coating on the glazing to uh, mitigate heat gain, heat loss. Um, the, the better uh, envelope around the window when you remove the old window and put the foam in and all of that. that. That seems to me, as long as you're not changing the outer appearance, my guess would be that, you know, 99% of the people who go by and look at it will never notice change once it's done. Okay. So, number two, if you read it, that one, Alterations do not affect any essential architectural or historic characteristics of the feature. I think that's what you were kind of saying. It didn't really yes. change. Mm -hmm. As viewed from any adjacent public or private street, ordinarily should be permitted. Okay. John, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Again, I, I spent too much time on a ladder, and <laughs> uh, right? so so I, I guess I'm almost too practical in this particular one. Uh, okay. and, you know, although we, from a historical standpoint, those windows really are you know uh, something that people would see more than they would the other windows. Uh, you know, if they came up the stairs, especially. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. But based on what I'm seeing here, it looks as though you know the typical person wouldn't see a difference, if you will, uh, that, you know, it would, what they're doing would make sense. 
Yeah. The other problem would be if, in fact, you don't put a storm on there and you have a single uh, pane, is that when you have uh, humidity in the in the winter time and you get frost on those windows, then it basically runs down, and that's probably why the windows basically end up. Uh, being so deteriorated on the inside, which is classic, if you will, if you don't have the thermal pane windows. Uh, and certainly, in my experience, that's the case. Uh, okay. Lois, what are your thoughts? Um, I, you know, I... I Um, I, I guess I would like to uh, have as much information to make our best recommendation as possible. And I don't know how long it would take to check with a restoration place, and I don't know if the village is um, how they feel about doing that or want to do that. Um, it may come back that it doesn't make sense at all to restore that. Mm -hmm. But at least we would have more data to make that assessment. Right, that's true. Right. Mm -hmm. Now there is one other question here, and that is, uh, will that interfere with the timing in terms of what they plan yeah, to do? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Timing is not a question for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the timing we have is green, yellow, <laughs> and red. <laughs> so Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> So with additional information, we may be able to say, yeah, we agree that go ahead and replace the windows, or we may get good information that. Uh, Jeff? Well, I, you know, I kind of agree with everybody. I mean, it, it'd be, <laughs> but, but, you know, if it comes to, you know, there's a practical side of the cost and every other thing. I know maybe that we're not supposed to think about that either, but I mean, that's the reality of it. Well, this takes us into into the uh, somewhat into the cost. We're not supposed to look directly at costs. Uh, but yeah, there was one about the. Well, so it, we're talking about number whatever. Number five, basically. Yeah, yeah number yeah. five. That's right. Okay, so you want to ensure the economic viability. We don't want to disturb the economic viability, but. Right, but you have the the place in southern Illinois that you said has done all this restoration, mm -hmm. correct? So you do have a name, or at least no, a, there, are, there, a are firm, there are firms that do, that do this work. So, so we come to the, do we ask them to, to do some more research, or do we uh, ask them to come back in? Essentially, our, our options here are to terminate the review tonight and let them replace the windows. Mm -hmm. Our next option is to say we would like to, that we, the middle option is that we have insufficient information and would they go and gather some information and come back next month. And then the, the one in red is uh, that we continue the advisory review uh, because we think the work would be inconsistent with preservation. I don't think we're hearing that. No. I don't think I'm hearing that from no. anybody. No. No. So we seem to be somewhere between terminating the review and saying go forward and looking at this and saying, well, we'd like a little bit more information and, and so will they come back in 30 days? Oh, do you have any idea if, I'm sorry, if, if the um, firm in question that's down in Galesburg um, had charges and how, how long of a backlog they have or any any information like that about how long it takes them to this is a very popular topic so i imagine i, I would backlog. think you know I, i'm wondering if if we could ask like forest library what their experience was with them mm -hmm. um whoever was in charge of that progress uh project might still be around somewhere and we could i, I know the people at ragdale are still there okay so. okay well, and they had to do it in pieces, right? Right. Like they they did two, and then they did whatever the quantity they, was. But yeah. it wasn't all at once. It was over time. Right. So. Uh, so here here's my issue with those <laughs> windows: is we have two two stories, right? Two experiences. One is an experience where the restoration um, was going to cost thirty to forty percent more, and the quality of the outcome of the product was less than replacement. So it was a premium price and a lower quality. 
We have another experience where we have mm -hmm. restoration that um, maybe took longer. The price was about the same and the quality and for the efficiencies and all that was the same. So to me, if we are gonna do the due diligence, we should, if, if we have time, Drew, <laughs> to maybe um, request that those windows get an assessment for restoration, if we can do it in an expedient way and not stop the project. Do you have any sense of how long it would take you to uh, find somebody to, to come in and do an assessment of the windows? Do you have any experience in doing that? I could talk to, I could, I can't, I could talk to somebody tomorrow and see when we can set up a meeting to come out and look at it. <clears throat> So the answer is no. What you're suggesting is not unreasonable to say that you guys could, as an alternative action, is have a condition that the, the, we get that number, find out what the assessment is, mm -hmm. and just we can take that information to the board. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the board probably has a project plan, I assume, right? Like, I'm sorry. Is there a project plan? Like, is there? Was there funding for this that came from the state or is other no. funding sources? No, the idea, this is local sources okay. and the idea that um, we would bid it and, and award it in the spring. Okay. To be taken. Yeah. So, um, so it, it's one of those things where I, I don't know that this is not uh, of the utmost urgency, right? This is not a life safety issue. Mm -hmm. So I think there would be enough time to at least get a number to be part of that assessment. And, you know, frankly, the biggest frustration point you guys have already pointed out is why do these other windows fail so quickly? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you pay 20% for a premium now, and maybe there's a payout longer. So um, mm -hmm. worth asking the question. Our, our, our schedule was to, um, you know, we're intending to have drawings done early December for, um, you know, advertising for bid then. And so, uh, you know, if we're decided on the 1997 windows, we, if you are comfortable terminating the review on those, um, if we're gonna do the historic, um, you know, restoration on those, we would probably do it as two separate bid packages and we could, you know, finish our, our design mm -hmm. on, and bid package on the 97 windows. Mm -hmm. We got to that level of conversation at the ABR too. It's like, it's, it's appealing to two different, you know, sex of the, of the the market in terms of builders. Good in the 1997 yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Drew, yeah. Yeah. we could set up the bid package in such a way so that, you know, you, there's going to be multiple bidders on this project. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there would be multiple bidders for the 97 windows. Those people won't probably be bidding, but then there'll be a separate package sent out at the same time for you know, the assembly A of the tower windows. Mm -hmm. And we could we could send that out at the same time in the bid packages, have a certain date come back, do our due diligence a little bit more in regard to what we're gonna get because we're gonna be setting this up in the spec uh, when we do this, that in general, whether it's the newer window, whether it's the restoration, we wanna meet this specification. Mm -hmm. So everybody will be meeting that goal or tell us what you're going to be meeting at and we'll see if that's viable. Mm -hmm. And then the numbers will come back. So then it turns into, I'm going to say more of a, an economical thing. Okay. It's, it's, it's 20, 30% more to do that okay. or this. And <laughs> we're, and then that, those packages are given back to the board for review and saying, what's the best way, what do we want to do here? And then, and then, then I guess you can have all those discussions again of the, the guidelines and say, what are we meeting compared now with the financial aspects of it all? So when, when a restorer would bid, can they, is there like a requirement on efficiency that they would be as efficient? I mean, how do you make sure that, because at the very beginning we decided this was about energy efficient right. windows uh, and forget the money thing right. we got they got to be as good as replacements right, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. is that something they'd be able to discern for well, us if 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 they would have to do testing on it that's what i'm okay. saying is that yeah, okay. is that 
there is that goal of, let's take for example, we know what a new window we have to shoot at. We have to also <laughs> shoot and make sure that the windows will meet the code requirements. Okay. Yeah. So that's our goal now. Okay. Okay. Now, now that's our goalpost we have to reach. Whoever, whatever's going on, whatever you do, this yeah. is our this is our guideline. Okay. Tell us what we're going to do here. You have to meet that in the spec. Okay. okay. Do you want to Thank you. So this takes us getting back to the decision making tree we have here. We have the green piece and then the, the yellow one in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So we can terminate the review, or do we want to ask them to come back in thirty days? Uh, but can we do break. it? Can we break the? Can we make a motion? Out. Make it a two section. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if they're willing yeah. to do that, I, I don't see if. Can Can I take it? You're going to be dealing with different contractors if you do a rebuilding anyway. So right. yeah. Oh, could Could I make? Stop trying to cough on you guys. Can I <laughs> try to make a motion and you tell me if it works? Sure. Okay. So okay. You. I move that we terminate the review for the 1997 windows. And then I move that we continue the review for the, the tower windows, requesting that an evaluation be made as to um, level of effort for restoration in comparison to replacement. So the measurements that we'd use for the replacement in comparison to the restoration. Okay. Do we have a? Do you, do we, are you able Wait, to, is that a good motion? That? Yeah. It may be a little difficult to achieve that. I was thinking something more simple, perhaps. <laughs> if it, if it was, <laughs> just to terminate review on the condition that the village pursue an bid alternate program for the tower windows. Oh, well, how do we? Really? I like how that. Do we, how do we have them come back to us? <laughs> what would would be the board's going to be the decision maker ultimately? Yeah. Right. You guys have weighed right. in saying you prefer the towers to be. Restored. Restored. That's the message if, can be delivered it, to them. Depending on what. So the, delivered to the village, the village board. board. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to have to approve the bid package anyway at the end of the day. Yep. In terms of the approval of the project construction, because it'll be of that dollar value. Yep. So does that does that achieve where what we're trying to do? It actually. Well, does. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand it, you. It, I think it does, yeah. and that right. continuing it, the the advisory review. Well, I don't know what that would accomplish. Right. Okay. Because there, unless there's something else, we, right? Because the timing, you, it'll be, the timing will be elapsed before yep. we have that information. Okay, so if they come back in 30 days, they may not be able to gather the information. Yeah, they want the bids package won't be on the street, it, it won't yeah. be, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but to have the two, the, the bid packages set up like Drew's saying, at least if I'm what understanding, mm -hmm. we're having the bid packages for the 97 windows, mm -hmm. bid packages, and everybody's bidding at the same time. We let the bids out. To to stop me if I'm wrong at the and, same time. And then we come back at a, after a certain time and we're saying, okay, here's our package A. Eh? We know what this is. We also know that the, the new windows will cost this. In lieu of this, there's restoration. So, so then you'll have that. You'll have the design guideline or the standard spec, and then the bid packages. You, guys, the boards, can look at and say which way are we going to go with this. Well, thing? and I think the problem, at least in my mind, would be trying to ensure a certain specification delivery on efficiency level. I think that's problematic in that we don't know what we don't know. Right, and right. So, um, but just that they, so in my, my thought is cost, efficiency, and maintenance, or whatever those metrics are, that there's a comparison. So... Replacement gets you X, Y, Z, and restoration gets you A, B, C, and then they, the board has something to compare. Adam. It's, yes. Yeah. yeah. We can yeah. do that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Are people comfortable with that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you can compare. In the, can I just interject so the 30-day time frame? That's going to be difficult. That, no, that, yeah. That's why I suggest this approach. Yeah. 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 Just so everybody, this, yeah. This discussion is whether we can eliminate that 30-day oh, okay. time frame. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 I had been thinking we needed to keep the 30-day time frame, yeah. and Drew is saying we can eliminate it right. that's, and thank follow you. a different yeah. course to get yeah. there. Okay. So, you want to try your motion again? again? <laughs> I move that we terminate the review. Uh, requesting that a bid for replacement of the 1997 windows and a replacement and restoration bid for the tower windows. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. All right. I'm for a second for that. I second it. 
We have a second. We have a, a motion and a second. Um, do we have a roll call vote, please? Questions, comments, or no questions, comments. Any any more any more discussions? <laughs> Deliberation. Uh, any more deliberations? And there doesn't appear to be anybody attending from the public still, so that's good. Okay. So you uh, voice vote. Uh, okay, we can do a voice vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any uh, any opposed? And motion carries. Somehow I knew that would be the outcome. Good. <laughs> Thank, right. you. Good. thank you. Thank you. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you very much for bearing with us while we go through this process. We don't do this very regularly, and I wanted to make sure we, we went through this and did this sort of by the book, by the rules. Literally, okay? yeah. And so um, <laughs> this is an opportunity to do it in, in, in sort of a non-confrontational way. And so uh, thank you. Thank you very much thank for you. this. With the friendly applicant. The friendly applicant. <laughs> so it's compared to last month. <laughs> well. So. Okay. okay. Thanks. That was interesting. Okay. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you. Okay. So we have um, a couple more items here. Uh, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Their work is done. Class Their work is, not is done. <laughs> <laughs> Their work is done. We're, we're 30 okay. seconds out of getting out of here. Just, I'm just so chilling. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't have much in the way of a uh, commissioner report um, other than to announce my pleasure that the high school is going to replace its, or is going to rebuild its windows and install storm windows. Uh, it's another uh, way of preserving the visual character of our built environment. So that's what's so very, very important. Um, do we have any other comments? Um, <clears throat> do we have a staff report of any uh, nature? Okay. Hey, Lauren, have you heard anything from Lake Forest about the uh, the camp program? Just that they're working on time. Like I think they're in February. They're having some difficulties with the scheduling. Okay. I think I should call Kathy Cerniak. Okay. Oh, this I had one this thing. Okay. Um, on Monday evening at from 5 to about 645, there's going to be a reception at the firehouse. Uh, Fire Chief David Kraft is retiring. Sadly, there's not, there, not another 50 years in him. <laughs> given a half a century to the village as a volunteer, amazing. and it is amazing. And so I um, want to acknowledge that gift he's given all of us. Yeah. And so um, if people can attend, that's wonderful. Well, he's done more than just be part of the fire department. So. He has. He's also on the village board and other things. So mm -hmm. a long time. CLC Jawa. Establishment of the water treatment plant, water, okay. and uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. Goes on and on. So, a good guy. So, I have a friend that was so early, she was there this Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so, there could be a line. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, uh, any other comments? So, we are going to be adjourned. Thank you all. Yeah. Looking for a motion. Second. Yeah. I move that we adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There we go. Aye. There we go. I was I, I appreciate your expediency. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks everybody.